Hey friends, in this video, I'm going to be sharing a story. The story of how learning how to invest completely changed my life. Like I went from a state, you know, of being fearful that, hey, I might fail and lose everything that I've built and become poor. I might mess up to a new state of like knowing that there is no way I can fail, that I will definitely become rich. I became hopeful. I became confident. So... I hope by sharing this story, it can help some of you achieve the same things that have happened to me. All right, so let's begin. So I come from a very average household. Like, uh, you know, the median salary in Singapore is like 6,900. And my family is like two thirds of the average median salary, which is not bad. You know, we're just 33% poorer than everyone. And... 75% of the people are like richer than us, right? No, we're not poor. <laughs> and you know, my dad and mom, they're like yin and yang. My mom is always saving all her money. Like she starts from zero. She's going to save till like a hundred. And by the time she retires, she's going to spend all her saving and go back to zero. And my dad is the total opposite of her. He's like the businessman, you know, take all the money, put it in the business and grow it. So it's all or nothing. And in our case, he's always the zero. So he's like zero trying to reach 100. But right now, he's still a zero. So that's his story. And you can't blame him. You know, business is hard. 99% of the businesses fail within the first 10 years. So it seems to me that business is a make or break. You are either zero or you become like a Mark Zuckerberg, like a 100. There's like nothing in between, even though that's not really true. And that's the situation of my life when I was a kid, you know, growing up. That's my family. And you know the feeling when your family fights over money, like some of the more memorable incidents in my personal situation is like whenever there's a dispute over money, over rental, then there is this moment in time where my parent, one of them would threaten with his own life. Like, hey, you know what? You want money? You need money? Kill me. Take my life. Take my CPF money or in other words, my social security money. You know, if I'm dead, you can take all my social sec social security money. That's like $70,000 in there or $80,000 in there. Yeah, kill me. And you can even take my insurance money too. That's like $100,000. And that's just what destroys me. Like sometimes my parents will threaten with their own life, you know, because money is so much more valuable. It's a much more important asset. And I also recall the incidents where my parents would fight over money, you know, and you pay my bills, where's my money? And one of my parents would stomp out of the house and the upset, angry, agitated parent would then turn the shotguns from, you know, the person that ran out of the house to us kids and start shooting angry bullets, you know, don't be like your father, you know, he owes a lot of money, he doesn't pay his debts and that hurts because I respect my father, I look up to my dad a lot, uh, he's my model, he's my role model and He's a person that I respect and admire when I was really young. So by shooting him down like that, it really creates a lot of dissonance and unhappiness. And I attach all these things to money. Not having money created a lot of problems in my life. And, and ever since I was a child, I really wanted to break out of this rat race. You know, not having to fight over money or threatening to take your own life just so that you can have some more money. So I remember very clearly when I was 10 years old, uh, really young and chubby boy back then, I wanted to make a lot of money. So one of the available opportunities back then, you know, when I watch a lot of news, was that elite athletes make a lot of money. Like if you're a good soccer player, you're fantastic. I think back then it was in boxing, a uh, famous athlete swimmer, you make a lot of money. And in fact, our prime minister, the Singapore prime minister even said, if a Singaporean gets the Olympics, the Olympic gold medal, he will pay $1 million. And I was like, yeah, that's my way to getting a lot of money. All I needed to do was just win an Olympic Games and, you know, take the gold medal, give it to the prime minister and take my million dollars, right? And that was how I started to train like twice a day, hoping to become a professional athlete. And I did. I became a national athlete for Singapore, uh, representing Singapore in the Sea Games. And the funny thing is, it is not what I expected. Like being a professional athlete in Singapore back in those days paid way less. Like I was paying, I was being paid 
a lot less than the person that was cleaning the hall. Don't talk about minimum wage. I was like half of minimum wage if there was a minimum wage in Singapore. And the prospects were bad. So that's why I figured, you know, being an elite badminton player in Singapore, I couldn't make money. It's a lot better now. So if you're an athlete, you know, it's times have changed. And then the question became, you know, how do I make millions of dollars? So the question was, how do I make money? How do I be rich? How do I make millions? You know, a recent survey showed that the average American needs $1.7 million to retire. And Singapore is the world's most expensive city. So we need approximately the same amount of money. So how do I get $1.7 million? Like, I don't need to be the Warren Buffett. I just don't want to be poor. I just want to be happy. Don't you get it? So in my mind, I calculated, you know, if I were to go back to school, graduate from college, and I make like 3000 $3,500 every month and I save like half of that. Do you even know how long it's going to take for me to save a million dollars? 50 years. And that's not including having to pay my school fees debt and to buy a house, which is like half a million dollars in Singapore and the potential of even having kids. That's going to be a lot more money than that. Saving half my money. <laughs> So in my mind, I thought, is there even a way out of this, this rat race, this trap that I'm so deeply inside? Is there any way that I can be rich to make, you know, money, good amount of money, have good amount of money? Or am I just being foolish? Am I daydreaming, thinking of a fantasy that would never happen? So the natural thing I did was to turn to a lot of books and mentors. So I remember during the time I served the army, which was for two years, I read a lot of books. I was reading every single day, even to a point where, you know, I was out on the jungle. I carried a book inside my armor. So if it rained, I would hide inside my bunk and just try to read like books. And, and I was even scolded by my commander once because like what? It was picnic. That's what he said. And by mentors, I meant wealth gurus because yeah, those are people that were available to me. And they taught like investing, making money online and all sorts of things. And so after reading hundreds of books and spending tens of thousands of dollars, I finally found out that there is a way that I could actually achieve what I wanted to achieve. And that method is called index investing. So one of the most popular indexes that you can invest is, is the S&P 500, which is essentially investing in the top 500 companies in the United States. What this does basically is to allow you to diversify. So you're not investing in one particular business, you're investing in a lot of different businesses and you're looking at the top 500 best companies inside the United States. So that includes companies like your Apple, your Amazon, your Google, which owns YouTube and all the banks. So the point is that you would never lose all your money because you're invested in so many wonderful companies. And not only that, you're guaranteed that every period of time you're going to get dividends because this, this big companies, right? Some of them will pay dividends. And because you're invested in like 500 of them, some of them are going to pay you dividends per period of time. So that strategy basically means all you're doing is just pouring money into a money making machine. It's brilliant. So once I learned this strategy, I quickly use like a historical online calculator to calculate like if I were to put money for the past 40 years, like just put $1,000 every month inside the S&P 500 index. So just a basic indexing strategy. How much money would I have today? Not to mention there's also this thing called inflation that eats away your money every year. So I need to adjust inflation in as well, right? Turns out after investing for 40 years from 1980 to 2020, where we are in the peak of the coronavirus pandemic, Investing $1,000 every month would mean putting in $480,000, which would have turned into $2.5 million inflation adjusted. So the actual value is going to be like five over million. That's insane. 2.5 million. Can you imagine having $2.5 million? And what's even more beautiful, it's, it's not just having that 2.5 million. It's also the dividends that you get every single year. You know how much dividends you would get? It's like a conservative estimate would be approximately 3% dividends and 3% dividend of a 2.5 million portfolio would be like $75,000 every single year. That's $6,000 every month, which is the average median income in Singapore. You get that all for free. And there you have it. There's no need to pick individual stocks, no need to trade options, no need to kind of like start your own business selling it setting up an e-commerce store, all that kind of stuff. All you need to do is just maintain the discipline, 
put money regularly into a money-making machine on a consistent basis and BAM! That's it. All is done for you. That's the beauty of the strategy, index investing. When I learned of this method, I didn't just learn how to invest. I learned a method that is surefire, gave me hope and gave me, you know, that sense of certainty that, hey, if I put money in this, I will never go back to zero. I'm not going to like go to zero, go to 100 and then go back to zero. That will never happen. I can start to properly accumulate wealth for the first time. That eradicated my sense of fear. And that's what I learned from investing. And that's how investing changed my life. So I hope this video is helpful. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos on investing. I do document some of my stories. So hope to catch you around soon. Take care, everyone.